So blessings to you as we travel through this Lent. It's an honor as your bishop to be able to present to you this year's Idaho Annual Catholic Appeal. Every year, as you know, we take up a collection to help support the different ministries that we offer throughout the diocese. With your help, we're able to do so much. I'd like to center on three um, areas that I really do think as Catholics we need to be attentive to and the appeal sees to that need as we move forward. The first is this, family life. Family life needs to be center of everything we do because as you've heard it said many times, as the family goes, so does our society. The stronger the family, the stronger our society. It only makes sense. Second would be our care for children, our youth, that they grow in the faith, the knowledge of the faith, they live that faith. Not just as infants, not just as children, but all the way through high school and college, we care for our young. And finally, the sacraments are key and foremost to our faith, our sacraments of the Eucharist, which we celebrate as part of the theme this year, as you'll notice in the brochures and the pamphlets and letters that come your way. I'm excited to, again, join you as we raise the money that we need to do for the success of this year's campaign. Again, ahead of time, I want to thank you for your contribution, for your care of your diocese. God bless. What is your goodness? There is no mountain that stands tall as your face. One of my favorite stories of ICYC, there was a boy who had come from a troubled family and he was going to come in and get baptized to the church. So I told him he had to come to ICYC with us. And as we were getting on the bus, he's like, do I really have to go? He, and I said, yes, you have to go. I, I physically put him on the bus. And Saturday, Friday, he was a little nervous. And he says, I feel out of place. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this. And I said, you'll be fine. At the end of ICYC on Sunday, he came up to me and he said, thank you. Thank you for having me come. And he says, I didn't know I could know God this way. And he just continues, he's still coming to church, he still participates. And I think that's one of my favorite stories of, a, of a somebody coming out from ICYC from Friday to Sunday. It was right at the end of high school where I had a profound experience of not only knowing God's love for me, but having an experience that God was asking me to give myself totally to Him. Um, and the means by which He was asking me to do that was through priesthood in the Diocese of Boise. Without the Idaho Catholic Appeal, uh, seminary would have a lot more um, of a material mindset. We would have to worry about um, everything from food to clothes. Um, but we don't have to do that. We're just free to discern what God's asking us to do, knowing that the diocese and the people of the diocese are supporting us. It takes a lot from a lot of people to make a man into a priest. So I was kind of going in like, okay, you know, the Lord's going to be there regardless of what I feel or think or anything. Like the sacrament, if it's given to me, then I've received it. You know, that's the beauty of the faith and the beauty of the sacraments. You don't, it's not dependent on my emotions, right? Like if it happens, if something great, amazing happens, so be it, you know. But if not, we're still equally good. As soon as the bishop put his hands on me, on my head, I knew, I knew there was something different. I mean, I knew immediately. It's hard to describe, but it was like, oh yeah, this is this is for real. I mean, one of the, the really big things too after that was, for me that was very profound, was uh, putting my hands in the, in the bishop's hands and he puts the, the sacred oil and he anoints my hands. And I just had the most distinct sense. While I could see these things were attached to my arms, which were attached to my body, that even with seeing that, that these were not my hands. Christ's hands are attached to my body, you know. As a priest, um, you're responsible to the bishop and whoever, whatever other church hierarchy you're under. But everyone else you're trying to serve. 
like all of a sudden now it's like, okay, now I have to make the decisions. And I now it's got gone from like almost 100% receiving to 100% giving. Yeah, it's a radical shift. And I mean, you need the grace of holy orders to do it. There's no way I could do this stuff without that. And I felt that grace. I felt it at work. But just, just the knowledge of like to being able to say to someone honestly, like, okay, this person just received anointing of the sick, confession, holy communion, and they received the apostolic pardon. And sometimes, you know, they're not able to receive all those for various reasons, but let's say they, they get some of those at least. You say like, if, if they receive these sacraments like anyone normally would, that is worthily and with honest intention, there's a very high degree of, poss of, of probability they'll end up in heaven. Very high. And to be able to say this out, that, that's someone that with a straight face and to know it's true, like it's a supernatural truth, is like amazingly consoling. It's like, yeah, no, you're, you're, your dad, your mom, your grandpa, his body's failing him, his soul's in great shape. He's ready to meet Jesus. And just to see what that does for people, you know. Star.